Hey everyone, a lot of you will know we have a site full of team comps for TFT, but we also do these expert video guides to take it one step further. You can find all of our comps for set 5 on our website, and all the information like items, transitions, and positioning in the link down below. This is an assassin comp with Nocturne as the main carry. Since he's a 3 cost unit, you'll want to 3 star him to keep pace with 4 cost carries later. The rest of the team uses Revenant to provide frontline and buff up Nocturne. This is a slow leveling comp that looks to 3 star Nocturne and possibly other assassins like Pike. Since Nocturne is a 3 cost, you can slow roll at level 7 or 8 to 3 star him, depending on your circumstances. At level 8, you'll want to run Nocturne, Fiddlesticks, Viego, Volibear, Diana, Ivern, Pike, and Kha'Zix. This comp has two primary win conditions. Firstly, 3 starring Nocturne makes things a lot easier, as you'll be able to burst down enemy backlines. The second condition is getting an Assassin Emblem. You can either make one yourself or try to get one from the Tome of Emblems. Without it, you won't be able to reach 6 Assassins, which is a huge power spike for this comp. Otherwise, just 2 starring the team and having good positioning will put you in a strong position to win. The main option for this comp is the 4 Assassin variation, which you'll play when you can't hit a Sin Spat. It frees you up to drop Kha'Zix for a unit of your choosing. Usually adding in a Mystic like Gwen or Lux will be the way to go. Everyone runs a little magic damage, and both units help out your frontline as well. You have other options like Renewers or Invokers, but they don't provide too much for the rest of your team. If you're sure you don't need Mystics, go with any high value 4 or 5 cost you can 2 star, like Heimerdinger or Garen. Our spatula section is short and sweet. The name of the game is 6 Assassins, so you know you're making a Sin Spat. If you don't have that option, Revenant Emblem is also useful, but it's a sin to pass up a Sin Spat. We've got a lot of options for Radiant items, but there is a clear winner. Radiant Runan's Hurricane is the best item for this comp. Letting Nocturne hit multiple targets really helps him carry despite being a melee unit. It also increases the value of your other damage items. When you don't see Hurricane, you can go for those items like Radiant Deathblade, which is great for stacking up more AD, and scales with the crit damage from Assassins. Radiant Infinity Edge and Last Whisper are both decent, but the regular versions are also fine, so only take these if you don't have better options. Radiant Bloodthirster and Hand of Justice are good as well, but Nocturne already has built-in sustain with his passive, so we'd prefer more damage. Radiant Ginsu's Rageblade is a decent pick if you think fights are going to last a long time. The goal with this comp is to burst down enemies, so you usually won't get as much value from this as you would with other carries. Radiant Quicksilver is the best defensive item on Nocturne, as he can be susceptible to crowd control. The only issue is that unless Nocturne is 3-star, he might not have enough damage without 3 offensive items. Moving on to general items, let's finish up Nocturne, our main carry. Nocturne's best picks are crit items with Hurricane. This means Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, and Rudan's Hurricane will make him a very strong DPS carry. You can run the Radiant versions of any of these items with a preference towards Hurricane. Lastly, if you can't make these three items specifically, you can always build other strong attack damage items like Giant Slayer, Bloodthirster, Ginsu's Rageblade, Deathblade, etc. Just remember, his best in slot is Radiant Runans, Last Whisper, and Infinity Edge. As for our secondary carries, Fiddlesticks is where you want to put your Assassin Emblem. Vully and Ivern are going to be tanking for us, and Fiddle can do some real damage in the backline. Enemies will often clump up to protect their carries, and an Assassin Fiddle can wreak havoc. Pike is a particularly annoying Assassin that you can try to 3-star while looking for Nocturne. He'll do well with a lot of utility items like Spear of Shojin, Sunfire Cape, and Frozen Heart. Viego is nice to itemize as he can be game-changing when positioned well. He uses a lot of items very well, with Blue Buff, Quicksilver, Infinity Edge, and Hextech Gunblade being some of his favorites. Special mention goes to Morello Namicon. It can be a great slam early, and later on can be held by Voli, Fiddle, Diana, or Pike. Let's break down our strategy stage by stage. Since this comp slow rolls at 7 or 8, you can play the early game like any default comp. Level up early and try to win streak, or save your gold and lose streak if you don't hit upgrades. Try to use assassins early and add in other traits where you can. Level up to 6 at 3-2 and build the strongest board you can with the units you find. Finding early copies of Nocturne here is great as you can start putting your core items on him. Level up to 7 at 4-1. If you need to stabilize, you should roll down a bit in order to find and build a strong team. At this point, you have the option to slow roll for Nocturne 3. However, you can also choose to wait until level 8 to slow roll if you're very strong or have a very good economy built up. Go for level 8 once you find Nocturne 3, or level up to 8 at 5-1 if you decide to wait. If you waited, start slow rolling for Nocturne 3 at level 8. Roll more aggressively if you start getting low on health. The positioning for this comp is very simple. 
You want Volibear and Ivern up front to take damage. Your assassin should be positioned strategically to land on priority targets. Use Diana to drag out enemy carries, and try to aim Pike at the furthest enemy unit so his stun hits the whole team. Try not to have Nocturne jump by himself, as he might get bursted down if there are no allies close to him to split enemy damage. Lastly, if the enemy is huddled into the corner, you can move Volibear and Ivern back a row or two to try and make the enemy move out of that corner. This potentially gives your assassins room to jump into the backline. Here's an example of an early game board with assassins. Make sure to have a solid frontline. That'll give you everything you need to know to win with our 6 Assassins comp. Remember that you can follow along with this guide in-game with our TFT overlay, so make sure you download that and bring it with you into your next game.